Good morning, Boker Tov. Please help yourself to some coffee and donuts. Welcome back to 10 Minutes of Meeting, Mr. Sharam. With tremendous gratitude to our anonymous sponsor, Lezech Anishmas Alter Shlomo Ben Pinchas. We are on the 22nd chapter of Mesil Sasharam. And Amchal has been teaching us, helping us learn and practice how to be better and better versions of ourselves. And here we are deep into the Sefer, towards the end of this magnificent work, where he's teaching about the Midah of Anava, the character trait, the attribute of humility. And we saw last time that humble people will live more mission-driven lives. A person who's arrogant, a person whose ego is inflated, a person who thinks the world revolves around them, such an individual feels that the world is here to serve them. Life is about their rights and entitlements, what they can get out. But a humble person, a modest person, a person who realizes we're here to serve Hashem, we're here on a mission, we're here for a purpose, will dedicate and devote their life to Hashem. And the Ramachal reminds us, no matter what you've achieved, no matter what you've accomplished, no matter who you are, and no matter what you have, how could you be arrogant? If you simply contemplate for a moment how lowly we are, how mere mortal, how finite, how fragile we are, and if you look back at our greatest people in our history, Avram Avinu said, Anochi Afar Ve'efer, Avram Avinu, with all that he was and all that he accomplished, and the whole way he revolutionized and transformed the world, Avram Avinu still nevertheless said, all I am is dust and all I am is dust and ash. Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, Nachnu Ma, what are we? David HaMelech, Anochi Solas Loish, I'm just a worm, I'm not even a person. And the Ramchal goes on to say, Wherever you excel in whatever areas you are wonderful and excellent and accomplished, we all also have matching areas of shortcoming and flaws and failures. We could choose to focus and emphasize everything that goes right, or if we simply remain aware, not beat ourselves up or feel ashamed in a debilitating way, but if we simply maintain an awareness of when and where we go wrong, we'll realize there's no room to be arrogant. If people only looked when we're in private, when the camera's off, when no one knows who are we, how do we behave, what do we say, what do we think, what do we watch, what do we do, if we realize our struggles, if we realize who we are, there's no room to be arrogant. And even if or when we succeed in doing mitzvahs, are we doing them at the highest level in the best way possible? You know how hard that is? What does it mean to do mitzvahs in the best way possible? Rabbeinu Yonah, not the Ramchal. Rabbeinu Yonah writes in Shari Tshuva, Anashem tzadikim v'yisharam b'libosam, shagalam kalavi tamib machshavosam, yinamu achateim kenam azyam, v'lasher katsur katsur yadam yavodas Hashem. To do a mitzvah for the right reason is not just Hashem said so. Certainly not because you want the reward for doing the right thing. To do a mitzvah for the right thing is to do the rats on Hashem, you want to give nachas ruach to Hashem. How many of us can say that we do a mitzvah for the absolute right reason? So what are you going to get? Pride? Proudful? Are you going to think you're all that because you do mitzvahs? Are you doing them for the right reason, the right motivation? And then the Ramchal makes an incredible comment. And he says, even if the only shortcoming you have is that you're human. We're human. We're mere mortals. We're finite. We're fragile. We're for future worm food. We are humans. We're humans. We're flesh and blood. We are Yulid Isha. We're born of a woman. That is enough to make us feel inferior and inadequate, to feel finite and mere mortal. It's enough to be humble. And on this, the Mashkiach of Dan Segel elaborates in his commentary on Mrs. Sharam in a really powerful way. He points out, that none other than Moshe Rabbeinu himself, it's a Gemara in Shabbos Peiches, when Moshe Rabbeinu Allah Lamarom, the Kabbal Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu ascended on high to receive the Torah, this week's parish, next week's parish, Amram Alachim HaKosh Baruch Hu, the angels protested. And what was their protest? They couldn't say Moshe is unworthy, because Moshe is the greatest of all men, categorically different than all other, the Avon Avim. So what was their protest? The Malachim, they said to Hashem, Ma li'alud isha beinenu. We're here in the heavens, celestial beings, angels, perfection. This Yelud Isha, this mere mortal, this flesh and blood, this finite man, what's he doing up here? He doesn't belong. He's not part of our club. Being a Yelud Isha, simply being a mere mortal, being a finite creation of God, having a finite life, that an Hashem is here with our goof, being future worm food, it in itself is a reason to be humble and modest. 
and to realize how limited we are. This is what the, the great Tana, Kavya ben Mahalalel, tells us in Mishnah and Pirkei Avos. Staka b'shlosh advarim v'yata boli de'avera. Think about three things. Me'ayin basa l'ana to'olech l'miyata osa l'itin din v'cheshbon. Me'ayin basa, where do we come from? Tipa srucha. We come from, where do we come from? What brought about our existence? And where are we going? And how finite life is. And we simply contemplate that. What are you going to get, arrogant? But then Rav Don Siegel says something amazing. He says, contemplating our, our mortality. Pchisus v'grius. Pchisus ugrius. Just think about how lowly we are. Just think about, in many ways, how pathetic we are. And then he quotes another Gemara in Shabbos, Dav Chafei. Gemara makes a sort of cryptic comment. Ezu Ashir, who is a wealthy person? I'd say, I don't look in their driveway. What's the square footage of their house? Check their bank account and portfolio and their holdings. The Gemara gives a very different answer. The Gemara says, you know who a wealthy person is? Koshi Yeshla Beis Akisei Samach L'Shulchano. You got a good bathroom near your table? You know, you got to know where the bathrooms are every time you go someplace. You got to know where the clean bathroom is. If a person has an accessible, clean, functional, private bathroom near their dining room, you're a wealthy person. It's a bizarre definition of wealth. What does that mean? What does that mean? So here in his commentary, Mr. Sasharam, Don Segal says, Shulchano, your table can make you arrogant. You have $100 bottles of wine, $300 bottles of scotch, got corned beef pastrami, first cut, you got a charcuterie board, you got guests, you're serving on silver and crystal and fine china. Your dining room table, with its delicacies and its decor and its dignitaries, your dining room table could breed arrogance. Look what I can afford, look who I host, look what I have. And that's why the Torah tells us, Pen it's when you eat and you're sated, when you're satiated, that's when our heart could inflate and we can grow arrogant. So Kodesh Baruch Hu said, the very same table, and the very same food, which could be the source of your arrogance, is exactly what's going to make you humble. How does it make you humble? Because we don't just get to drink the fine wine and make lachayim over the fine scotch and eat the first cut corned beef and the brisket. Soon after, if you're Ashkenazi, very soon after, if you're Sephardi, you have a little longer, but soon after you eat and imbibe those foods, what are you going to need? A good base akise, some good reading material. So right after engaging and encountering the very thing which might cause us to be arrogant, it right, a lot, right away becomes the catalyst it right away stimulates a sometimes panic, urgency, humility, immediacy of our very humanity. It's even less than humanity. An animal has to relieve itself. A human being can feel that pressure. It's a mighty dick vort. It was worth coming just for this this morning. He says... What does it mean, Ezu Usher? Who's a wealthy person when you have a base akise next to your dining room table, a bathroom next to you? That's the definition of wealth. What a bizarre definition of wealth. It doesn't mean physical, material wealth. It means who's a wealthy person spiritually, emotionally? Who's a well rounded, well grounded person? Who's a humble person? When you think about the base akise, samach l'shochano, while you're eating off that fine china and crystal and silver, while you're sipping and imbibing that expensive wine and scotch, while you're eating from the charcuterie board, you remember the Beis HaKisei is Samach L'Shulchano. You remember that it won't be long till you'll need the Beis HaKisei from all this food, and that will humble you. Rather than grow arrogant, you'll remain humble, and that's what it means, Ezo Ashir. That's what it means. You're spiritually and emotionally grounded and wealthy when you remember the Beis HaKisei, Samach L'Shulchano. As I said, Ashkenazim should be more humble. You know, we have uh, ancient genetic gastrointestinal humility. We should. We should walk around exceedingly humble. We live with Beis HaKise. We, have, we are mindful of Beis HaKise, Samach L'Shulchano, and that should lead to a level of, of humility. So the Ramchal says, 
This is anava b'machshava. Humility in thought. We'll get to humility in action. But humility in thought is when you realize, I'm going to look at this table, who I host and what I'm eating and what I'm serving on. I'm going to think I'm all that. In a few minutes, I'm going to be desperately running to find a bathroom. I'm somebody who could be arrogant. I'm pathetic. I'm pathetic. The bathroom is the great equalizer. Our stomachs are the great equalizer. And Hashem designed that intentionally. It's the brilliance of the human factory, the human body, that Hashem designed and embedded the very thing that could make us grow arrogant becomes the pivot to become the very source of our humility. So what are you going to be arrogant? You're going to be proud? Just think about the last time or the next time you have to go to the bathroom. It should make you humble right away. We'll pick up with the next time. Living with Amuna in 15 minutes tonight behind the Bima, 9 p.m. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay holy.